Oh, yeah, well, let me, let me clear this up. Um, uh, so there's never been a time where more music has been available to people. There's never been a time where there, there was easier access to music. Probably anybody who's listening to this on the radio or computer could stop, think of any piece of music that they, that they can name and probably get it for free in seconds. Um, everybody's got a cell phone that will probably pay, um, play MP3s or MP4s. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's easy. There's music surrounding us everywhere. As we go through our day, um, as soon as we enter a retail space, there's music being pumped in. If you're on hold waiting to, um, to pay a bill in, in some cruel and abusive automated, uh, automated phone system, you'll, you're, you're, you're forced to listen to, to music. And, uh, and, and so it's a, it's a musical age. Check out all the music. Sometimes I wonder how much we actually listen to. Listen to. Often I think it's, it's, it's ways that we cover up the sound of our modern mechanized world. All, all the different whirs and hums from compressors and small engines and transformers. So we're, we're basically putting on music to cover up the, the automated sounds the same way that we burn incense to cover up the stench of the cat box. Um, but here in this time where there's music everywhere and it's easy to put your hands on it, there's never been a time where it's harder for musicians to find places to play for money, to, to actually be able to work as a musician creating and playing music. Because it used to be if you had some sort of event, you had to have musicians to play for it. Now you just turn on the radio or, or the, you, know, you get a, um, a, a PA system and, and, and broadcast music. It used to be that for, um, for any sort of uh, entertainment, you would require, it would require a band. Well, technology is taking care of that now. There's a, a lot of different ways to do that. and and it's become easy to record music. And so now we have recordings of music. But now, since all of that has been digitized and it is easy to move around those recordings with no change, you could make a, a digital recording and, and copy it an infinite amount of times and, you, and effectively there's no, there's no change to it. Uh, more than half of American teenagers have never paid for music. It just like it doesn't even occur to many people to pay for music. So the business model that I grew up in is totally changed. It's hard to find a way to make a living as a musician. And I've heard a lot of very intelligent people talk about this a lot of different ways. I am as as a musician now I try to use every way that I can to try to get by, to try to be able to continue to be a musician. Um, I primarily make my money from playing live shows and sometimes that's money that people pay for um, the ticket to get in to see a show. Sometimes it's money in a tip jar. Um, I make records, I make CDs, and, and, and I sell the CDs at the shows, and there's still people who will buy a CD of a band that, that, they, that they actually see, that, where they would not necessarily buy a CD otherwise. Um, and I certainly appreciate that, and most people who see live music on a regular basis have at least some understanding of the economics involved of it, because if you are paying $5 to go see a band, and you just paid $9 to park, you know, you, you, you've got you've an idea of what the value is because you know there, then you, you go see a band and there's there's six people on stage or three people on stage and there's a sound guy and there's the guy who's taking money at the door that that money that you just paid for cover isn't going to go that far um, so so these are difficult times to make a living as as a musician there's all these different ways that we can consume music like say say for example Pandora. Pandora is, is a really interesting and a, and, and a fun sort of platform for discovering music, um, although they're working with Google at present to try to limit the amount of money that the copyright holders, the people who wrote the song or own the mechanical royalties for those songs can make off of it. Here, interesting fact, if you sell a CD for $15, um, uh, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to check all the math on this, but you have to sell something like 375 CDs in order to make minimum wage, you know, for a, a given amount of time. Well, during that same amount of time, you would have to be played 16 million times on, on Pandora in order to make minimum wage. 
So, yeah. it, so Pandora is not a good way for musicians to get paid for their work. It's, the, it's, it's, it's tremendously undervalued. What's the value of a song? You know, we, uh, we were told by iTunes that it was 99 cents. You know, so like you pay 99 cents, you could get your favorite song. Prices went up, and it was like a buck and a quarter or something like that. But but generally, the perception is that it's it's pocket change. It's it's less than a cup of coffee. It's less than even a Coke out of a vending machine. Uh, but what's the value of a song when it's the the thing that that in in a hard time you just had a breakup or something like that? That's the song that you keep listening to because that's the thing that makes you want to go on. Or it's that song that makes you feel witnessed. You know, like you, you you're connecting with this particular singer and the thing that they're saying, the art of it, the poetry of it. That oh well, though you understand me, um, uh, uh, Sister Seven, you understand me. You understand what's going on. You know, you you, you understand my heartache. That's tremendously valuable. And we all and we all crave that. And and anybody hearing this has some sort of memory of some song at some point. It was worth way more than a buck twenty-five. If I could get that sort of experience at will, I would be robbing banks to get it. You know, like if I thought I could just simply buy it, if I thought that I could I, I, I could pay for something that would make me feel like I did the first time that I heard Muddy Waters sing. You know, like, wow, really? I'll, how much? Here, I'll sell my car. Because there's no substitute for that because it's a genuine emotional response. And uh, people who, who try to sell you things are always trying to promise you the possibility of a genuine emotional response. Sometimes it might actually happen.